Hey guys, welcome back to Biblio Fitness. Hope everyone is doing well. Hope everyone made gains. Hope everyone's having a productive day today. It's quite freaking gorgeous. It's gorgeous and hot. That's how I like it. Well, not really. I like it a little bit colder. But on today's episode, um, I wanted to talk about uh, that I'm, I, I well, I'm nearing the end of the Rise of the, the History of Rome podcast by Mike Duncan. Uh, definitely check it out. It's a fantastic podcast. I'm nearing the end of it. I'm in like the 420s. So we got 50 something years. Uh, and the Vandals just took, were about to take over uh, North Africa. Uh, nothing but children are running the empire. Um, it's sad to see the decline, even though, you know, the, 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 the seeds for self-destruction were quite evident while looking at, looking back at it retrospectively, of course. And, and what I'm referring to is the blatant corruption that was never able to be solved no matter what sort of government i mean it, not even the not even the corruption because that's something that's inherent in all governments if you to be quite honest with you but it's also the legitimacy crisis the legitimacy crisis was never solved and i've talked about this before and diocletian made a very solid attempt in trying to and try to resolve that issue and his predecessor really tried to do the same as well, you know, f and um, focusing his legitimacy on something else besides the army. Because at the end of the day, Rome was nothing more than a military dictatorship. And that's why the most important elect demographic elector, like the, the most famous, the, the most important electoral demographic was the army. Um, legions were constantly nominating emperors and that, that never stopped. Um, Stability was never really found. Like obviously there was these blobs between great rulers. You had Diocletian. You had then you have Constantine, which is quite controversial to say the least. But and then you know you have these certain individuals that were able to bring everything together, but they all fuck up. They all fuck up. None of them care, bro. Like it's fucking crazy. Like Diocletian, for example, the Tetrarchy. What do you think was going to happen eventually that you're allowing four individuals to reign supreme over a given region, given how we are as like, like it's in our inherent in nature to be avaricious creatures. So, and then he steps down and like all these governments were only kept alive because of the genuine, genuine uniqueness of these individuals. There was no one else like a Diocletian during that time period. No other uh, Constantine, not even not the, not even Theodosius, who died a few months later after he won the civil war to unite the West and the East. They left it in shambles. Diocletian retired. He saw the Tetrarchy literally crumble as soon as he stepped down. As soon as he stepped down, the Tetrarchy was already crumbling. As soon as Constantine died, Constantine did like some fucking Eastern European or Asian succession law bullshit of just allocating a certain amount of, of land to each of your your male relatives or some shit like even let he even let property or, or land or or whatever to his nephews and shit and and it was just a, the brothers going at it with one another just killing each other you had the murder of the what is it the the the, the massacre of the princes by constantius ii i believe or constantius uh, which was the middle brother, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the middle brother uh, with the main three. It was three of them. And he ended up winning out because Constantine II died. And then who was the, who was the, one, who was the youngest one that died while he was running shit with him? Doesn't matter. It was a shambles. Constantine, with all the shit that he did, trying to solidify Christianity, trying to perform all these things and leaving a damning legacy. Um, he left it in shambles. It's like he didn't care. He didn't even name a fucking successor. He didn't care. Same thing with Theodosius. What are you doing nominating your sons? It's like, like it, it really became nothing but a monarchy. And that, and it shows you how flawed monarchies are. Like we are so pathologically, like in, in like it's it's a pathological symptom or something that we are so. Desperately, we desperately need our relatives to succeed after us, no matter what the cost to the state, no matter what to the cost to even the survival of your own dynasty. 
if you have a weak ruler, if you have a child, then you're, you're, you know, like that's what's going on in, at the end of the uh, Roman Empire. It's nothing but power brokers in, in the background. It's not really strong leadership. And and it's at a time when you're facing many existential crises at the very same fucking time where you, out of all times, this is where you cannot have weak leadership. You have to, this is where a meritocracy would be greatly needed and and it's greatly required, you know, like it's greatly, it would do wonders to just get the best and the talented to try to resolve these issues because they're not going anywhere and no one wants to join the army. So and there are just there's just so much shit going on. Um, it's quite interesting to see the downfall. Um, but yeah, the legitimacy crisis was never solved, and and just titles became nothing. And you know, I mean, titles became are everything. That's why people were dying for. But um, it's just it's just weird. I mean, I guess you know that goes to the whole theory that that you know empires have a, a, a what is it? A lifespan, you know, eventually they're all going to crumble. There's just going to be decay. There's going to be something going on. And that's what happened with Rome, even though, it, like I said, it really never saw. It's a miracle it survived this long, given that it was constantly eating itself while others were trying to take over what it had. You know, it's astounding that it survived this long. It's astounding that it survived centuries with, with constant civil strife. It's crazy. <laughs> um, I'm gonna also I'm gonna get into revolutions, which is also by Mike Duncan. After this, this is honestly gonna be my only history source. I started reading um, Sleepwalkers, which is a great book if you're interested in finding how 1914 really started. Um, it's quite. It's 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 really fucking good. <laughs> um, it's very profound. It's a lot of information. In that book, you can tell it's highly researched. It's a great book by Christopher Clark. Um, but I can't. I got to read, you know, finance and sales and stuff like that. Because we got to make money. We got to make businesses. We got to get, you know, moves going. Um, you know, history is not going to make me any money right now. Um, I got to allocate my resources and my time into things that are actually going to benefit me a little bit earlier with more wealth. You know, of, um you know, the economy is getting more expensive. We need to make more money and stuff. So that's going to be the goal. We have to be pragmatic. Uh, pragmatism is a good trait, so, unless you become a psychopath. But, you know, that's a conversation for another time. But, um, yeah, just being more rational with my decisions. And understanding that there's only so much time in the day where I'm cognitive enough to be able to read. And it can be going to history. I've already read enough history. Might as well read stuff that's going to make me money. So hope everyone has a great day. Um, and until next time, guys. Love y'all.